Hey everyone, in this lecture we're going to learn about a way of saving data across different browser sessions and this method is called local storage. So let's dive in. So, so far when we've had uh, data and state in our memory in our JavaScript and React projects, this data is transient, which means that when we refresh the page, it disappears. And it also means that it can't be accessed between different browser sessions. But often we want our data to be persistent between sessions. For example, a user might have some settings and we want to save those settings for the next time they visit the site. Uh, when we want to store data, we can store it server side in a database or we can store it client side, uh, for example, in local storage. So like I mentioned on the previous slide, persistence can be done in two ways. So most traditionally, when we want to store data, we do so on the server in a database. Um, so this involves making requests to the backend server when we want to retrieve and modify data. And then the backend endpoints will do something with that data and save or retrieve it to and from the database. Now we also have the option of storing things client side, which means storing info on the user's machine in their browser. So this can be done using local storage. Now client side persistence is not a replacement for server side persistence. It has a few pros and cons, which we'll dive into later, but its main limitation is that the data stored client side is only accessible for that specific client. It can't be accessed by any other devices or users since it's not in the server, it's only on the client. However, client side persistence is still a really quick and easy way of adding persistence to your site. So we're gonna focus on that in this video and we're gonna dive in how to do this using local storage. So what is local storage? Local storage is an API which exists in the browser, which allows you to read and write to a storage object in the document. And this data which you write to the storage object is persisted between sessions, which means it stays if the user refreshes or closes their tab or browser. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of using local storage. And then in a moment, we'll dive into how to use the local storage API in JavaScript. So let's look at some of the limitations of local storage first, um, in some situations where you wouldn't want to use local storage. So the first point is that local storage is not secure. Uh, local storage is accessible by any web page. So um, if any web page knows the key which you used to store the data, then it can access and change the data you've stored. So in any situation where security of data is important, for example, things like passwords or personal information, local storage shouldn't be used. Secondly, there's storage limitations to local storage. So there's a limit to the amount of data you can put in local storage, and this just depends on which browser is being used. So even if you're not personally storing a lot of data in local storage, if other websites that the user is using have stored a lot of data in local storage, the user's browser might already be at its storage limit from another website. Um, and you might hit quota limits when you try to use local storage. So um, yeah, when you hit a quota limit, you won't actually successfully be able to save data. So um, for any crucial information or for large amounts of data, local storage is not a great solution. Uh, the third limitation is local storage only supports storing strings. So it accepts key value pairs and the values are only strings. So it's not good for storing complex data. So this isn't a very hard or serious limitation as you can always serialize a JSON object into a string, but it's just worth noting that if you use local storage for storing complex data, then you'll need some extra work to serialize and deserialize the data. Um, finally, local storage is not suitable for data which is needed on multiple devices. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, um, since it's stored client side, it's only accessible on that specific client. Um, so yeah, it's not useful for data which is needed by multiple users and it's not suitable in cases where the user needs that data if they go onto your site on a different device. All right, so now let's look at the use cases for local storage. So local storage is great for a few reasons. Firstly, it's very useful for when you have a front-end only site with no server. 
Um, yeah, it's just a very quick and easy way to add some persistence. Secondly, it's um, good for storing information which is not crucial if it's lost. So being stored on the client means if the user clears their local storage or clears their browser storage, they'll lose what you've stored. Um, on top of that, if they want to um, access your site from another device, they won't be able to access the data stored in local storage. So I'd recommend using it for non-crucial data. And finally, we've already briefly touched on this, um, but the data being stored on client side means it's available to a specific user only. So some examples of things you should use it for are things like personalized site preferences, for example, a user's custom color scheme, or persisting their previous activity. For example, on a shopping website, you might want to store the contents of their shopping cart and not lose that when they leave the page. All right, now let's take a look at how we can actually use the local storage API in JavaScript. So the browser's local storage is a big object consisting of key value pairs. So we can read and write to it, similar to a map in JavaScript. So you can see on the first line here, um, to add a key value pair to the local storage object, we can use set item. So that's just local storage dot set item and accepts the key and the value. If um, you've already, or if an item already exists in local storage with that key, set item will override it. Uh, next, we can use get item with a given key to retrieve data from local storage. So local storage dot get item, if you pass in a key, that will return a value if it exists. If it doesn't exist, it'll just give you undefined. To remove an item from local storage with a given key, we can do local storage dot remove item. And finally, if we want to clear all the items in local storage, we can do local storage dot clear. All right, let's do an example. All right, so you may remember from last week's lectures on forms that we created this example of a form for a user to create an account. So um, it's just some HTML which has a username, date of birth, password, state, and a file handler. Um, and we've also got some JavaScript over here which um, handles submitting the form. Now we're gonna add some local storage to this to persist the data which the user has entered into the form. So just to quickly demonstrate the issue here, if I type in some data and I start entering in some data, like my date of birth, if I refresh the page, I've lost all the data that I typed in, um, which can be pretty frustrating for a user. So often what websites will do is they'll um, keep the data in the form using local storage. Now I mentioned earlier in the lecture that storing uh, secure data in local storage is not necessarily a good idea because local storage does have some security issues. But uh, just for the sake of this example to demonstrate how to use local storage, we're going to store all the create account info in local storage. So let's get started. So what I want to do is I want to add an event listener for when a user changes what they've entered into one of these fields. Um, so to do this, on each element in the form, I'm going to listen to the change event. So what I'm doing is I'm calling array from sign up form, which gives me um, an array of all the elements in our create account form. And I'm going to loop over this. Now in my for each, I'm going to add a change listener to every element in the form. So I'm going to do element.add event listener for change. And before I start using local storage, I'm just going to console log uh, the value to show you how we can get the value from this change event listener. All right, so if I start typing in the form, I type Anna, you'll notice when I change the value of one of these elements, 
I'm console logging the element's name and its value. So here's going to be name Anna. Same thing happens for date of birth. And you can see it's working for all my fields. Now, inside this event listener, instead of just console logging, what I want to do is I want to save whatever I've typed in into local storage. And for the key, I'm going to use the element's name. For the value, I'm going to use the element's value. So let's do that now. I'll refresh the page. Cool. So when I've entered in Anna, um, I've now set this item in local storage. Now just in the browser's console, I'm going to try and get this value just to see if it worked properly. Cool. So you can see when I call local storage dot get item name, um, it's console logging Anna. So I've correctly saved the value in local storage when I've changed the value. If I try typing in something else like Anna2, I've typed in Anna2. If I call get item again, now it's updated. So our on change listener is working and we're correctly setting the item in local storage. The last thing I want to do is when the page loads, I want to populate this form with all the fields which were previously entered into local storage. So to do this, I'm going to set element.value to the item which I retrieve from local storage. So here I'm just doing element.value equals local storage dot get item and using the key element dot name. Now just quickly I'm going to add a check to make sure that the current element is not the file input element because um, this needs to be a file name and we don't want to be able to programmatically set it to a string that's not a file name. So let's just quickly add in a check. And we also don't want to change the value of the submit button since this is also one of the form fields. So I'm just going to check the type is not submit. Let's try and run this. So I'll fill in the form. Okay, and I'll choose an image. And then when I refresh the page, you'll see that all these fields are already filled in with the data that I entered before I refresh the page. All right, so that's it for this example on local storage. And that's it for this video. So thanks so much for listening. I hope you learned something.